So this is a story that happened in a land far away, but not unlike the land that I come from, of tall forests and many lakes. And there was a village, and in this village was a farmer, and he had two sons. And the first one was very quick to learn and eager to help, and could always pick up any new trade. But he had this, this one thing of he really was afraid of the dark. And when his father bade him to go across the village and he had to go past the cemetery, he would say, oh, no, father, don't make me go over there. You know how it makes me shudder so. And the younger son would listen to his elder brother say this and say, I wish I knew how to shudder. So this younger son was a good-natured young man, but not the brightest, not the brightest torch in the parade. And uh, whatever he tried to learn, to learn a trade, to make his way in the world, he just could not pick it up. And his father took him aside and said, you know, one day you must learn a trade. You must learn a craft. And the younger son said, oh, father, if only I could learn how to shudder, I should be content, for then I would be like my brother. And the father said, my son, you are indeed a trial. Well, the sexton came to visit the, the farming father, and he was telling the sexton about the troubles he was having with his younger son, and the sexton said, send him to me, I shall polish him up. So the younger son went with the sexton and tidied around the church and raked leaves and so forth, and after a couple of days, the sexton said, now at midnight tonight, you must go up into the bell tower and you must ring it. And the younger son said, okay. And midnight came, and the younger son went up the stairs and went to the bell when he saw a creepy figure in white in the corner. And the younger son said, hey, what are you doing there? And the creepy figure said nothing. And the younger son said, you were in my way. If you don't move, I'll pitch you down the stairs. And the figure in white only went, Ooh. and the younger son said, all right then grabbed him uh, around the waist and threw him down the stairs where the sexton broke his leg at the, the bottom. And the younger son rang the bell and went to bed. And uh, in the morning, the sexton's wife was quite distressed because her husband hadn't come home. And he went to the young man's son and the sexton hadn't been there. And finally she checked at the bottom of the stairs of the bell tower and found the sexton still there nursing his broken leg. So the sexton gave up the, uh, the project of teaching the young son a, uh, a skill in the world and sent him back to his father. And the father said, my son, you must go forth into the world and you must tell no one where you came from and you must tell no one who your father is, but just go forth. And he gave him a few coins and sent him forth. And the young son went saying to himself, if only I could learn to shudder. Well, he went on his way, still saying to himself, if only I could learn to shudder, if only I could learn to shudder, until he came to an inn, where he ordered drink and food, still muttering to himself, if only I could learn to shudder. And the innkeeper said to him, I have a task for you. You should go to the court, the court of the king, for the king has promised that the man who can survive three nights in the haunted castle shall win the hand of his daughter. And the younger son heard this, and in the morning he went to the court. And he went there and he spoke to the, the chancellor, saying that he was here to survive three nights in the haunted castle. Now, they were. Uh, the chancellor explained to him that when a man took up this challenge, uh, that man was allowed to take three things with him and uh, the th three things of his choice. And the young son thought for a moment, and he said, well, I should like to take fire with me, and a wood-turning lathe, and a butcher's block with a knife. And they told him a butcher's block and a knife is two things, so that's four altogether. And the younger son said, well, they come as a pair. And the chancellor said, we'll let this go. So the young son went to the castle, the haunted castle, and with him, he took his fire and his turning lathe and his butcher's block with a big knife. And the haunted castle was very decrepit and full of leaves blowing the hallways and the decayed remnants of fine bedrooms and mighty feast halls. And 
he swept out some of the leaves and picked out a, a bedroom with a nice fireplace, and he built himself a fire there, and he scrunched together himself a decent bed to spend the night. And so he was there, twiddling his thumbs and saying to himself as the sun went down, I'll never learn to shudder at this rate. Well, there came a howling and a meowling, and he sang in the night. And he looked up, and he saw red glowing eyes out of the darkness, and a furry creature coming forth, and then more eyes and more eyes, and soon he is surrounded by black cats with very long teeth and glowing, glowing red eyes. And they morowled at him, and one of them came up and said, Oh, we wish to play cards. Don't you want to play cards with us? And the young son said to him, I certainly just stretch out your hands to show me that you can hold the cards. And the demon cat did that. And he took out his knife, put the cat over the chopping block, and chopped off his head. And then he did that with the other demon cat, and the next demon cat, and the next demon cat, and hauled them all out in a wheelbarrow and tossed them in the fish pond, because what else are you going to do with a demon cat? And so he settled himself back into bed and passed the night with the fire burning merrily, saying to himself, I'm never going to learn to shudder, am I? So in the morning, the king and the king's chancellor and much of the king's court came on bright horses up to the castle to see what was left of the younger son. And the king was saying, it's, it's such a shame. He was such a handsome young man. And they came and they saw him lying cold in the bed and said, ah, another one bites the dust. And the young man sat up and said, I'm not dead. I'm just sleeping. Oh, all right then. Yeah, there, there were cats in the night, but I sent them away. Well, the day passed, and the sun began to sink again as the second evening arrived. And I see a black cat, and it looks very happy. And on the second night, he again built up his fire tall, and the, the king and the court had brought him some dinner, so he ate his dinner there. And he was curled up in the bed, passing the time, and wondering if he would ever fulfill his life's quest when uh, a man's torso fell down the chimney. And this was followed by a leg, and then an arm, and then another leg. He thought, huh. And he stood up to put some more wood on the fire, and when he turned around, the first two halves had put themselves together, and uh, a man was standing before him. And another nine legs fell down, and uh, a couple more halves that became holes. And uh, they asked him if he would like to play nine pins with him. And they pulled out a human skull with which to roll the ball. And he said, certainly, I would love to play nine pins, and I would wager a small sum on it, but let me fix the skull first. So he took the wood-turning lathe, which he had asked for, and he put the skull on it, and he made it nice and spherical, so it would really, like, roll right down the great hall. And so they, they played nine pins um, by the, the light of the torches in the fireplace. And at the stroke of midnight, as the church bells came from the, the distant court and village, all the dead men vanished, and their nine legs, too, and the skulls. So clearly it was bedtime, and he went to bed. And in the morning, the king and his court and his chancellor all came up on their bright horses to see if the man had made it through a second night, which seemed unlikely, which was such a shame. He was such a, a good-looking young man. And they came and they found him asleep in his bed, and they asked, is he awake? And he sits up and says, I'm awake. But the night was rather long, but I played nine pins to while away the time. And they said, oh, that's good. Well, they, they brought him some lunch and dinner, and he passed the day in the castle, and soon enough the sun was setting for the third time. And again, he built up a nice tall fire and was twiddling his thumbs in his blankets and thinking it was a bit chilly when six men come in a door that had been locked when he first came in there. And they held on their sh shoulders a coffin and they brought the coffin over and they set that coffin on his bed. And he opened the coffin and said, why, it's my cousin Billy. What are you doing here? And why are you so cold? Well, there's only one thing to do when your cousin is so cold. You have to warm him up. And so he nestled down in the coffin right next to him, brought it up really close to the fire first, and was chafing his cousin's hands and rubbing his limbs to get the circulation back in. And funnily enough, his cousin did wake up. 
and began to strangle him. No, Billy, no. If you keep trying to do this, I shall nail you right back in your coffin. Well, dead cousin Billy continued to reach and to choke and to strangle. So the young man beat him around the head and put the lid back on and nailed it shut. And the six men came back through the locked door and picked up the coffin and took it away. And the young man sat back down on the edge of his bed and said, I'm never going to make it, am I? I'm never going to learn how to shudder. Well, at that point, he heard a voice behind him, a voice that said, Aye, but you shall learn how to shudder and learn to shudder this night ere you die. And he turned around and there was a tall, tall man with a long, long beard. He came forth and uh, he came forth and said that on this night you shall die, having learned how to shudder. But the younger son said, no, I, I don't think so. And he picked up, um, picked up his fire and branched it at the man, and he backed away. And he chased him with his uh, torch down the steps into the cellar. And the ancient old man who was there by the, the blacksmith's anvil, and the younger son picked up the, the, uh, the hammer and drove it straight through the man's beard and all the way through the hook at the end. And so that old man was pinned by his great long beard. And though he howled and wailed, he could not get free. So he picked up some of the iron stock and started beating the vampire on the head with it until the vampire yielded and said, if you will but let me go, I will bring you to the treasure of this castle where it shall be divided into three parts, one for the poor of the village, one for the king, and one for your own. And so he let the, the vampire free of his entrapment by his beard and he led him down, down to the dungeon and showed him the treasure. And then the first shaft of light broke through the, the tall gratings, and the vampire vanished. So he brought up the three chests of gold up to his bed. And then he went back to get a few hours sleep, because it had been a long night with a lot of you know physical exertion in it. And the king and his chancellor and his court all came up to visit on their tall, shiny horses. And they said... Is the man alive? And they heard snoring. And they decided, yes, the dead do not snore. So they woke the young man up and gave him breakfast. And the king, being a man true to his word, gave him to, um, the hand of his daughter. And he married the princess. And they were very happy together. But he never did fulfill his quest. He'd still not learned to shudder. And he would be up late at night. Uh, tossing and turning while his wife felt impatient, saying, if only I could learn to shudder, if only I could learn to shudder. And the princess complained to her maid. He, he spends all night just talking about how he can't learn to shudder. It, it's very disappointing. And the maid said, I think I can fix that. And so the maid went down to the fish pond with a bucket, and she filled it full of minnows and guppies. And in the morning, she took it, to the, the marriage bed, and she tossed the bucket full of slimy minnows and guppies and frogs over the, the young man, who woke up with a start saying, Ah, oh, wife, what is this that makes me shudder so? I have learned it. I have learned how to shudder. And that is the story of the young man who sought to know what fear was.